In this video, we'll be breaking down the anatomy and the biomechanics behind my suspicions for why Tyson Fury is so difficult to knock out. We'll be using footage from his latest fight against Oleksandr Usyk, who deservingly ended up winning by split decision. The first aspect I feel needs to be understood is what happens at the level of the brain to cause the acute loss of consciousness that we see during knockouts. The physiology of a knockout is something that I've made a video about in the past. There's a phenomenon that scientists have labeled mechanoporation. Here's a clip from my original video briefly explaining what scientists have explored about this theory. So they still have to flesh this one out a little bit. And finally, we have mechanoporation. Neurons are cells, they have a cell membrane. And as it turns out, if you induce a really hard mechanical stress to the cell membrane, like a blow to the head, it can cause a separation of the cell membrane that they call a pore. And Pettis et al. were able to discover these pores by inducing an experimental brain injury in rats and then flooding the cell membrane with different size markers. If the markers got through, it was determined that there was a disruption in the cell membrane. And these pore developments after a mechanical stress would obviously impede signal transmission, which would account for the acute loss of consciousness. It was also stated that based on what is known from some kinetic studies that these pores depending on their type could actually close anywhere from seconds to minutes which would then account for what we usually see in fighters the almost immediate return of consciousness now the full videos link will be in the description that details other theories and weaknesses to that theory if you find that stuff interesting the second aspect to consider is what kind of mechanical stress causes the most damage to these axons but I'm gonna do a little experiment I want to see if you guys can figure out what this is I'm gonna show you a set of two clips and then another set of two clips the first set of two clips is gonna be Tyson Fury getting hit and stumbling and the second two clips is gonna be Tyson Fury getting hit and not stumbling and I want you to try to notice the difference. Okay, so like I said, the first and the second clip, actually it's the first clip, the first two shots we look at are going to be ones that made him stumble, and then the next two clips are going to be uh, different clips, but shots that didn't make him stumble. Okay, and I want you to try and notice the difference. We're going to watch him full speed once, and then we'll slow him down. Boom. Stumble. All right. So if we go all the way back, we're really good. The left is the one that I want you to look at here. Okay, so... Watch the left, come here for music, boom. So notice what happens there, boom. We'll look at it one more time, real slow. All right, and the stumble. Okay, and then we're gonna slide to this one. This is a little bit harder to see. It's another left, boom, and he stumbles down. Okay, so we're gonna slide back again and we're going to look at it real slow. Another left. You'll notice that pattern too. Last one. Boom. And then the stumble. Okay, so now let's go to the ones that don't make him stumble. And we'll watch this full speed first. Yep, and then the little head tap Fury likes to do. So let's go all the way back. We'll look at another left again. Steps in, takes the left off the chin, lands pretty square. Okay, so remember, we're looking at the differences between the first two and then the last two. Boom. Last one. Gets knocked back, but he doesn't really stumble. He maintains pretty good composure there. All right, then the last one. This is the second of the one that doesn't make him stumble. It's a good combo there, but he pops his head again. Typical Fury fashion, this is in the second round, or Fury fashion, sorry. Right, left. And watch again. Good land with the right. Decent land with the left. I blocked it a little bit with the right hand. But still, two pretty good punches there. One, two. But he doesn't lose really anything, okay? Doesn't stumble. All right, so think about it for a second and rewatch it if you have to. And yes, I know it's really hard to nail down to one thing and there are probably gonna be other differences that matter. And if you've seen my previous videos, you probably know what I'm gonna say. But the answer seems to be that the ones that made him stumble are glancing blows or blows that cause a lot of rotational movement. Quick whiplash-like rotational movement has long been theorized and otherwise supported in the literature in human and animal studies to likely cause more axonal damage than forces in other directions. And one way that we know that we can limit the amount of rotational movement in the neck during a blow is strengthening the neck. Now, I'll be the first to admit, the research on this is not as strong as it could be. I plan on doing a deep dive into this literature in a later video. However, I am a firm believer that when it comes to the neck in combat sports, strength is hardly ever a weakness, and weakness is hardly ever a strength. We have several muscles that produce rotation in the spine. So these muscles that I'm about to show you are producing a movement that moves away from the side of the muscles that are on. Okay, so the first one here is the sternocleidomastoid. It's the really big muscle that everybody knows when it kind of pops out in the front of the neck. 
That's one muscle. Another one is the motifidus, again, one that we saw in the lumbar spine, a little less robust uh, in the upper, in the thoracic part of the spine, in the cervical part of the spine. And then we have semispinalis cervices, which is just another kind of secondary muscle that helps with contralateral rotation. And now we have rotation going towards the side of the muscle, okay? So as we spin around here, we can see that all the way up here, and this is just a good example. A lot of people think that the upper trap is the, is the big muscle of the neck. When you take the upper trap off of the neck, these are, this is all the small little muscles that are involved in uh, neck rotation and really neck stability in general. Okay, so we have the splenius capitis here, which is I have found to be some of the most um, contributing muscle when it comes to neck pain. We also have the splenius cervices and then the longissimus thoracis. Okay, so just layers upon layers of you know, thor uh, cervicothoracic musculature that play a huge role in the ability to withstand a rotational force or resist that rotational force uh, when you take a shot to the head. Now, in this video, I won't go too deep into how to train those specific muscles, but I did a video a while back on how I strengthen my neck without any equipment. So go check that out if you want more details for that. The link will be in the description below. I would imagine that if we did a cadaver dissection on Fury's neck, we'd see that his muscles are likely pretty developed, whether that be from weight training or from years of adaptation in boxing or both. Now, the third thing that sets Fury aside from mere mortals is something that we can't measure, and that's undoubtedly because he's got that dog in him. Dog. Look, we can make biomechanical analyses and theorize all day, and it's fun to do, but sometimes people just have that little bit of extra something that make them tougher than the rest. Some combination of genetics and environment molds some of us to just have a little bit more grit and tenacity than others. Now, I'm no geneticist, but Fury probably has whatever the fuck that is. And before you guys come at me in the comments, there are certainly other aspects to consider here, like skill level and being able to anticipate blows to the head. These were just the main three things that came immediately to mind whenever I started thinking about why Fury is so hard to not. Out. I hope you guys are continuing to enjoy these videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.